Again, today we're going to do a out of the box review of the 135 and the 105 Life PO4 Prismatic with Bluetooth uh, batteries. Uh, slimline in design. The uh, the 105 in size is 530 by 61 by 322, and the 135 is 738 by 48 uh, by 350 millimeters. The uh, 105 is uh, 61 millimeters thick, and the 135 is 48 millimeters thick. So. What we'll do is we'll take it out the box and uh, as you were down. Okay. So this one's the 135 and the configuration of this will go through in a minute. So the 135 has a maximum input of 50 amp regulated charge. You must charge these with a regulated source. They do come with a 10 amp AC-DC charger. So 240 to the 10 amp, and it's designed for the Prismatic Life PO4. So it's 14.6 volts. You'll see on the front there, it'll say 14.6 down to 10 volt, but rating at 12.8 volt. 12.8 is constant, so it runs right through the battery at 12.8 or higher until it runs out of power, and in the last couple of percent, it will drop off. Configuration wise, all the uh, inputs and outputs are on the ends. On the 135, you've got two Sigas on this end, and then on the other end, you've got the Andersons for the input output and also the USB-C, so fast charge USB-C. On the front here you've got the screen which is just a state of charge screen and it takes a while to come on, it takes about probably 20 seconds before it will actually come on. Uh, these batteries are really low at the moment um, so it'll take a bit of time before that just comes on. Once the screen comes on like so, what you can do is then connect them up to your Bluetooth. Your Bluetooth app looks like this, okay? And it has a number of different uh, parameters you can see on this. You might have seen on the tube before we did this. So you can scroll down. Uh, one of the questions we did have recently was, you know, what's the temperature settings on these? It's plus 70 degrees to minus 40 degrees is the operating temperatures. And um, 50 amp charge, 50 amp output in any given time. Um, you, you do have the AC-DC charger, but the DC-DC wise, you do have the options with the uh, SIGA DC. So you can have the SIGA plug, which you would have seen before for the standard Nomad. So these are a profile of 14.6 volt. Okay, so that'll charge 5 amp. You can also get them in 10 and 20s like these ones here with a double Anderson. So with those ones there, you need to put a, a VSR or if you've already got your own setup, these will regulate the power for these. If you have a solar panel, you must have a regulator on your solar panel. So the profile on the solar panel to the, to the reg, the regulator must put out 14.6 and have a life PO4 setting. So that's the actual profile of it. <clears throat> so with these units, you can't direct connect them to a solar panel because you will damage the unit. They're designed to take a regulated charge only. So you must have the little reg between this and your solar panel. And but up to 50 amps, so you quite happily could put a 400 watt solar panel and a 40 um, amp MPPT controller if you like. So if you want to use this in the home, which is uh, absolutely feasible uh, because they're for a commercial application, you can do so. <clears throat> the actual 105 model uh, I've got behind me here, <clears throat> It's, um, the configuration is all on one end. So you have the two SIGAs, the USB, and the 50 amp output for the Anderson. So these are perfectly suited to have the wire leads running out of them. So you might have two Andersons like so, coming out of the 50 amp, and run two fridges. So I've got two fridges down here, one of, uh, a 95 and a 50, and I can quite happily run them off this, no problems at all, and they'll run right through. And I guess with the chemistry of the Life Air and Prismatic, just touching on that, a lot of prismatic you'll find out in the market are encased in plastic, and we don't do that. So our battery packs that are inside these are actually encased in steel. So you've got steel inside steel. So they're extremely robust and will handle corrugations really well, but also the fact is that, you know, if you want to mount these in behind the, the seat and so on, we've got the brackets for it. They're three more thick, they're very heavy industrial, um, and you can make a nice and a flush fit uh, with the 135 and also the 105. <clears throat> so that's charging it. You do have the Sigur socket uh, option of the five because with the the um, 105, which looks like like this, the 105 is still quite easy to manage. And you might have that in the back of your car and want to remove it, the same as you would with your standard Nomad, um, because they're still quite easy to move around. So once you've got your Bluetooth connect to these, that's called a, a DALI or DAY. Smart BMS, you can look it up, it's um, DALI, D-A-L-Y, Smart BMS, um, and it'll connect automatic to this once it's within 10 meters of the actual unit. When the unit's charging, 
it'll actually be pulsating. That screen there will pulsate. And the SOC will tell you the amount of draw. So it'll tell you on here the amount of current that's going in and going out. It'll tell you the, uh, the current state of charge, so what percentage to full it is. And you can actually do that through here. So you can actually scroll through if you wanted to by here, if you've actually got access to it. But if you've got this behind the seat in the car, you're going to be using your app. So it's a little bit like the really fancy monitors you get that are mounted in the vehicle and cost quite a few thousand dollars. Um, you've got that on your phone. It's quite easy to set up and uh, works really, really well. Uh, and has lots of parameters for you to check and so on. If you do want to charge these with a, uh, a bigger DC-DC, some of the big name ones, you might have an Enerdrive or Red Arc um, or a Maxon. These are pretty good and they're really good value for money. They're not our product, but it just sort of was good to show you. These are a quarter Matson. Um, this one's an MAT21. That's a 20 amp DC DC charger with solar input, multi chemistry, so you can have AGM lead acid gel and live PA4. Once you set it up, it'll remember the battery you've got onto it. You can also plug your solar panel direct to this and it'll do everything for you. It also has a VSR built in, which is voltage sensitive relay. So if you connect that to your crank battery, when your car is stopped, this will detect the car stop and the voltage come down, it'll disconnect so it won't, it won't draw from the crank battery. These come in 20 amp and 40 amp and are really well priced. You can have a look at these, um, you'll see on our partners, uh, we'll actually have a lot of these. If you don't, just jump online and have a look for it. It's called a Matson. It's uh, built by Trident, so it's a really trusted name brand in auto. So the 40 amp one would be absolutely perfect for any of these big models here. Uh, the 40 amp with the solar input, you could run a 300 watt panel, I suppose into that and then it will regulate it all for you and you're never going to damage the battery and it'll sit quite happily and uh, be charged. So the other aspect of these is these are still quite light. This is 18 kilograms or 17 and the 105 is around about 13 kilograms. The standard Nomad we've got which is the 100 amp hour NMC that weighs about 11 kilograms. So it's not a lot different between the 105 and the standard Nomad, so they're still quite easy to handle. Even at 17, 18 kilogram, you don't want to carry it around, but it is still quite easy to move in and out. And the brackets you get, you get these, they're easy to lock in. So these are available now as well. And they simply can go in like so, and then they'll lock in place so they won't move. You can do it horizontally or vertically with these ones here. And a lot of people with these are going to use these to connect to a distribution board. So they'll have the 50 amp out, run a cable and they have their own board somewhere in the, in the canopy um, and running up to max 50 amps. So just remember always 50 amp in, 50 amp out in these. And I did want to point out is if you get products out there that say that you can do 100 amp hour, or sorry, 100 amp discharge out of it and uh, constant, I'd be concerned that if they've got these Andersons on the end that they're only rated to 50 amps. So I certainly wouldn't be saying, well, this can put out 100 amp through those Andersons because that's not a good way to, uh, to, to manage it because it's not what the uh, Andersons are rated for. They're actually rated at 50 amp. The bigger ones are uh, 125 and 180 amp. So 50 amp Andersons is typical and it's uh, industry standard typically for all of your plug and play stuff in the camp caravan market. Uh, so that's a quick look at it. It does have three years warranty under normal use and, <clears throat> and approximately you can expect about 3,000 cycles. Um, and that really depends on how you're going to use it. Some people cycle two or three times a day. Some people, you know, once every second day. It really depends on how you're going to use them. So they are designed to be on constant charge, if you like, and then constant drawing. So you can draw from them and be charging at the same time. There's no problems with that there. When you first get the unit, it's very important to just fully charge the unit. And then when you've got your, your, your actual app connected, you'll find that the screen on here that tells you the state of charge being 100%, it'll show you 100% on the screen because that can get out of sync if you leave the battery uh, for two or three months or a few weeks. It just gets out of sync for a little bit. The reason being is because of the technology inside, that's still working and sleeping every five or six hours. So what will happen is it'll still be drawn from the screen. But when you put it back on charge and you're charging it up, they'll catch up to each other and they'll be calibrated again. So not really an issue. Um, and especially if you're using them all the time in the back of the car, you won't even notice that difference at all anyway. Um, and that does work very well, very user friendly. You don't have to be super smart to use the app, very straightforward. And for most people, that app's just gonna tell you things, like I said, the draw, state of charge, you know, how much is coming out, how much is going in. But if you wanna go look at the different, the series inside, which is four of them, it can tell you the temperature of each one, it can tell you the series and the cell temperatures, uh, it can tell you which one's got a high voltage and low and all the rest of it. It's something that not, most people are not going to worry about. It's just if you really do want to look down and drill into it, you can. Um, the other thing is, again, these are not waterproof, so don't dip them in water. And also do not drill into the, uh, into the packs. I know it seems like common sense, but 
Um, we've had instances where people have drilled right through into the chemistry and uh, that destroys the battery straight up. Uh, so that's the Life PO4 Prismatic. So you've got NMC, but you've got Life PO4 Cylindrical. And then after Cylindrical, you've got Prismatic, which is the top of the range. And these are encased in steel as opposed to plastic. That's another question you'll get is a lot of the market are uh, encased in plastic, their batteries, and then put inside the steel case. So again, at nomedpdu.com, all of our partners have this in stock now, so it's now just before Christmas. Um, if you get in now, you should be able to pick yourself one of these up, and uh, including the, um, the V5. So everything in stock, including all the charges uh, for these, uh, five to tens, the 20s, the different configurations. Um, if you're not sure, uh, again, you can email us at contact at uh, nomadpdu.com.au and just remember always must be regulated charge must be regulated non-regulated charge into these units again thank you